Hi guys, I just finished my series where I set sail on the wonder of the seas for a three day voyage with my friends Kiki of Team Reese Travels and Siobhan of Parker's on the Go. Now this marked my second cruise with Royal Caribbean, my first being the Majesty of the Seas back in 2001. So I was excited about going from one of Royal's smallest, now retired vessels to their flagship, the largest ship in their fleet. So here's my review. When I set sail on Wonder of the Seas, departing from Port Canaveral, the parking situation for this huge ship was far from seamless. Now, when I arrived at the terminal, the parking took a frustrating 90 minutes, and the whole process was just a mess. But despite the parking fiasco, my actual embarkation process turned out to be a breeze. Now luckily, I arrived at the terminal earlier than my designated boarding time. By the time I had actually parked, my boarding window had already opened, allowing me to board the ship without waiting. And fortunately, it wasn't crowded, so I spent very little time waiting in line. And since I was alone, when I got to the entrance, I was directed to go to the priority boarding area for my document check. And then, after that, I was on my way to begin my adventure on Wonder of the Seas. We booked a guaranteed Central Park balcony cabin for this cruise. Booking guaranteed cabins can be a bit nerve-wracking because you don't know where you'll end up or what you'll end up with. However, we were pleasantly surprised with our accommodation. We found ourselves in a forward cabin on deck 11, offering a beautiful view of Central Park below. The cabin was clean, comfortable, and stylish with blue accents. It provided lots of storage space for the three of us, with room to spare for stowing away our luggage. There were plenty of outlets and ports to keep all our devices charged without hassle. We didn't watch the TV, but the screen size was more than sufficient for the room and could prove to be an added perk during longer voyages. Now the bathroom. The bathroom was on the compact side, but still offered sufficient space for us. We were especially pleased with having a glass door in the shower and there were plenty of shelves and cubbies to keep our personal items well organized without encroaching on each other's space. The balcony, although modest in size and equipped with only two chairs, it didn't pose any issues for us. We seldom found ourselves all out there at the same time. From the first moment I stepped onto the promenade, it was like entering a vibrant hub of shops, bars, cafes. It felt more like strolling through a shopping mall than a traditional cruise ship. The promenade is beautiful, but as someone who isn't particularly fond of shopping or mall environments, I was left a little deflated. But I do realize this reaction is largely a matter of personal preference. Now, as I venture deeper into the ship, I begin to appreciate the different features that the ship had to offer, like the boardwalk with its carousels, the opportunities for rock climbing, and the captivating diving shows provided a distinct and enjoyable experience. The ship had more of a laid back and relaxed ambience. I really enjoyed exploring the ship. Now, another feature tied to just my personal preference was the limited exposure to the ocean, which is really my primary reason for loving cruises. So while the ship is, I mean, it is just absolutely beautiful. I did feel that there was less ocean views throughout the ship. The solarium, beautiful, but it left me wanting like an adult area that would allow me to enjoy the ocean views and take in the ocean breezes. Now, as a solo cruiser, I love having the freedom of going with the flow and just enjoying my time at sea without being constricted to a tight schedule. Now, I did know, I was aware, that there was a certain level of scheduling expected for this particular cruise line. So, thankfully, I did have the opportunity to schedule and secure my preferred shows ahead of embarkation. A couple of the shows that I saw were the ice skating performance and the tap show. Their shows are impressive. My favorite shows on ships are the comedy shows. On this ship, you had to book the comedy show and you could only book one comedy show. So now I did schedule the comedy show, but I missed it and I missed out. Now, unless I opted to stand in line as a standby, which I just didn't do. 
Now, by far, this was my biggest disappointment about the wonder of the seas. Finding gluten-free dining options on board the ship became a major, major source of frustration. Now, what baffles me the most about it is because their sister brand, Celebrity, which is my next series, <laughs> but I actually left it because they have wonderful gluten-free options throughout the ship. And I also know that Royal Caribbean actually hosts a charter cruise for gluten-free cruises, so it really baffled me why there weren't more options available throughout the ship uh, outside of the main dining room. In particular, I remember one evening we were all on the promenade, we were having a great time, and the ladies decided to go get pizza, so I went too. However, unlike the first time that I got pizza, this time they were going to make me wait in line <laughs> just to order the pizza. So I had to wait in the long line to get up to the front to order the pizza and then wait for it to be made. So it could have taken about an hour for me to get my gluten-free pizza. And with dining with friends, they get up to the front of the line, get their slice of pizza, they're eating. By the time my pizza comes, everybody's done. So instead, I opted to go to the Promenade Cafe to see what they had. After about 20 minutes of waiting to see what they could come up with, they came back with the exact same sandwich that I had for lunch, except it was cold. So needless to say, by the end of that night and pretty much all the nights that I was there, I was left feeling a bit frustrated. Now, what made it worse sometimes at some of the eating venues there were certain servers who just seemed like they had no interest <laughs> in helping me find what I could eat off the menu safely. And this was honestly just a different experience from what I experienced on other cruise ships, other cruise lines. For food allergies, they usually go out of their way, just to make sure that you have something and then something that you like uh, to, to eat for that evening. Now, demarcation, that was a breeze. I carry on and carry off and do so early in the morning. So at that time there was no congestion and no crowd. So I have absolutely no complaints about demarcation. Loved it. So my cruise aboard the Wonder of the Seas was actually my least favorite sailing experience thus far. I would probably give it a rating of four out of 10. The primary factor behind that rating was the lack of gluten-free food outside of the main dining room, particularly on the promenade, because it's hard to have a good time when you can't find nearby options or you have to wait double the time as everyone else to have something safe to eat. One of the main beauties about cruising is the delicious food options you get on board. And up until this point, across other cruise lines, other cruise ships, I've always had plenty of options to choose from for gluten-free dining and gluten-free snacks. However, even with that rating, I will say that I'm not ready to write off Royal Caribbean completely nor am I categorically ruling out any future voyages with them. I do suspect and I hope that the three day duration of this cruise might have not allowed me sufficient time to discover like all of the gluten free options that they may have available on the ship. Now, with that in mind, I am planning a seven day <laughs> cruise on a Royal Caribbean ship with the hope of exploring more gluten free options and I'm anticipating a more favorable experience. Well, that's my personal review of Royal Caribbean's Wonder of the Seas.